Hi, everybody. Dick Vitale. Hey, make sure you listen, man, to Locked On Blue Devils with J.J. Jackson. He's awesome, baby. You are Locked On Blue Devils, your daily podcast on the Duke Blue Devils, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everybody, and welcome into another episode of the Locked On Blue Devils podcast. My name is JJ Jackson, and it's so great to have you here with us on this Thursday, January 19th, 2023. Hope that you're doing well. On today's show, really excited to continue to talk about the state of this Duke basketball team with my good buddy Dustin Shu, who's going to join us here in just a little bit. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to follow us on Twitter at LO underscore Blue Devils. Follow me on Twitter at underscore JJ underscore Jackson underscore. Subscribe to our podcast wherever you get them. You can watch the show daily on YouTube as well. So let's get right to it. Joining us now on the program is my pal Dustin Shu. I hope you're doing well, Dustin. It's been a pretty boring week, though, uh, with no Duke basketball to be played here throughout this week. Yeah, I mean, doing as well as I can be after a tough loss on Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no kidding. I mean, it was a tough one for the Blue Devils, and we mentioned not having a game to be played this week. And we did have a tough stretch like this in December where we had 10, 11 days. So I guess going Saturday to Saturday without a game isn't too bad when you look back at the month of December. No, not at all. And I think this is uh, – obviously it comes at a pretty good time with, with Jeremy being out, you know, give him a couple more days rest and hopefully can get that toe, uh, you know, mended up and get him back out there. Yeah, that's the big thing. No Jeremy Roach for the last three games for Duke. They've played four total in the month of January, and only once has Duke scored more than 70 points in those four games so far in the year 2023. What's going on with this offense? I mean, that's the million-dollar question, and uh, everyone wants to know. What do you think? Do you want me to put it nicely? (laughs) Shooters just aren't good. gets the point across, yeah. Shooters just aren't good at shooting. I mean – we saw down in the stretch in the Clemson game, we got a lot of good looks. We just didn't make any. Um, you know, Flip's been in a rough spell, shooting the ball from the perimeter. Uh, Proctor has been all season. I think he's still around 24% from three. Um, you know, Mitchell was making them early, but I don't think he's made one in a couple games. Uh, Grandison just doesn't shoot him when he's in. He, he made one against Pitt. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's just uh, – it's not the best shooting team I can remember from, from Duke basketball. Yeah, 3 of 20 uh, as a team against Clemson from three-point range is uh, is really tough for any team to be able to win games like that. Proctor makes a pair of them, and then you've got Kyle Flipowski who made just one. And it's so interesting because uh, the Duke team is a team that's got shooters um, that have had good stretches of three-point shooting. I look to even someone like – Tariq Whitehead, who last week we're talking about, he's coming off back-to-back games with four makes in each game from three-point range. Uh, And then this past week against Pitt and Clemson was a bit of a non-factor, so much so against Clemson that Whitehead goes one of six from the floor with just two points. It's wild that there are so many players this inconsistent on the roster. Yeah, and look, on our podcast, I had you know talked about before we headed down there, we we typically don't ever shoot well in Little John – and I talked about earlier, I'd been in Little John as a as a basketball player. That's where our team camp was every year. And it's tough to shoot in there. It's, a, <laughs> it's just I don't know what it is about it. Um, but, yeah, I mean, some of those guys, you, you know Flip can shoot. He's shown that he can shoot. He's just been in a slump. You know, not, he's not a Jack White level slump, but it's it was getting there for a minute. I think he was like 0 of 15 for, for a stretch. Um, Progner's form looks great. Uh, obviously, he's a 90% free throw shooter, so we know he's got – shooting ability uh Derek has shown those flashes and he's got that pro move kind of uh jab step step back um to a three but you know we just we just need to see more consistency from him yeah we've got to figure out a way to get that consistency piece going uh, absolutely for what he's been able to do whitehead when he's healthy it has been um, a bonus now but again not playing to his full potential and that sort of thing and hopefully Duke can get a little bit more consistency on the offensive end of the floor from everybody, right? Yep. Yeah, I mean, we talked about earlier in the season this was going to be a kind of a, a score by committee. Um, Flip had shown that he was maybe kind of looking at that alpha role, and then 
he's just not been efficient all year. He's been good. It's just his, his efficiency is down. Um, Dariq, I thought, could maybe take that step, but maybe it's going to have to be, you know, one night at Cisco and the next night at Cisco. I just – we need we need more from Dariq. I'd, I'd like to see a little bit more from uh, Mark Mitchell as well. Yeah, Mark Mitchell is someone that, and when he's out there, he does a lot of great things for Duke basketball. Just sometimes he's so quiet, and uh, you don't really notice him being out there on the floor. For him to be able to be more assertive, I think would be so big for Mark Mitchell to take that next step in his game. Yeah, sometimes I think it it's a it's a byproduct of the the way we play that too big lineup. Um, you're just not creating a lot of lanes for Mark and, and Dariq, who are slashers, to get in there without already, you know, having a couple defenders sitting there waiting on them. So it, it's it's just a tough scheme uh, for Mark to play in right now. Let's talk about how Duke can get out of that and improve that scheme and that sort of thing. And we'll have that conversation after our first time out here on today's episode of Locked on Blue Devils. Locked on Blue Devils here today is brought to you by our good friends over at Built Bar. I absolutely love Built Bar, and you need to love them as well. Because if you're looking for a delicious treat, but you don't want all the fat and calories, you got to try Built Bar. Don't look any further than them. 100% real chocolate for all of their Built Bars. That's exactly what makes them so good. Let me say that again. Real chocolate, 100% real chocolate, and it's so good for you as well. Only 130 calories four grams of sugar with the whopping 17 grams of protein. And now you don't have to wait around to get a box, right? We talk so much about Built Bar. I love advertising with them. We say, hey, go to Built.com. We've got these awesome promo codes. But then once you do all the online ordering, you've got to wait for the product to actually show up to your door. You don't have to do that anymore because now you can get Built Bar at your local Walmart or Sam's Club. That's right. Go to your nearest Walmart today. Walk to the pharmacy section, grab yourself a box of Built Bars. You can get a four-bar box of cookies and cream, double coat chocolate, or coconut puffs. You can also go to your Sam's Club run and grab a 13-bar box with our hit flavors, brownie batter, and churro. You can thank me later for doing all of this. Built Bar is a proud sponsor of the Locked On Blue Devils podcast. Welcome back into the program. Happy to have my friend Dustin Shu here with me on today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils trying to find a way schematically to make this Duke basketball offense work. A good thing for Duke is that their defensive numbers are still really impressive compared to the rest of college basketball. It's a matter of how do you improve it on the offensive floor. Yeah, and John talked about that uh, earlier this week in the press conference. He said, you know, they're, they're going to get back week full of practices and we've just got to learn – how to be better on the offensive end. I think that one of the easiest things is just taking care of the ball. Um, in a lot of our games, it, you don't shoot well, but if you don't kill yourself with turnovers first, uh, at least get a shot up, give a chance to get that offensive rebound, and we're still one of the best offensive rebounding teams in the country. If we're going to use that too big lineup, then we really need to exploit it um, and, and take advantage of it. So, uh, you know, there's a couple ways around it. Hopefully this uh, this week of practice we'll, we'll figure something out because – um, we know what Larinaga is going to want to do coming in Saturday, and we're going to have to be prepared for those guys. they got tough guards. Duke has yet to lose at Cameron Indoor Stadium. However, those guards did have an impressive victory uh, against Duke. Was that last season with, with Jeremy Roach? Had a, a late foul, I remember, kind of falling back, and Charlie Moore got a bucket to go. Isaiah Wong is still there for this Miami team. So, yeah, they know how to win in Cameron Indoor, that's for sure. Duke has yet to lose there this season. And hopefully that trend will continue on Saturday. Yeah, we definitely got to take care of the ones at home, uh, seeing how we've not been that great of a uh, road yeah. team. So, yeah, yeah, take care of business at home and then hope to steal a couple of these next couple road games coming up too. We take a look at some of these numbers so far for Duke on the season. Kyle Filipowski continues to lead the way for Duke scoring and rebounding. 9.2 rebounds a game. He's so impressive rebounding the basketball as a player, that scoring number has uh, fallen off a bit, though. And we mentioned the three-point shooting, 25.8% shooting from three-point range for Kyle Filipowski. By far the most productive Duke player this season. But when you compare him to other one-and-done guys that we've seen, five-star freshmen, so to speak, for Duke over the last few seasons, um, the, the counting stats haven't been as great for Flip. Yeah, like I said, it, it, I love Flip. I love the fight he plays with, the, you know, just how hard he plays. Um, my only criticism is, is the efficiency. You know, if you're shooting 
15, 16 shots, but you're only hitting three, four, five of them. Look, he gets his rebounds. I mean, he's he's one of the best I've ever seen at, at just throwing it up and going back up and getting it. You know, Marvin Bagley was real quick to do that too. Right. Uh, but Marvin Bagley wasn't shooting them from 12 feet out and still going and getting it, you know. Um, so so if Flip could, you know, just become a little bit more consistent, with, maybe it's all about taking a little bit better shots. Um, I think in the second half of that pit game, we got in the ball a lot closer to the basket. He didn't have to use – that that dribble drive from the perimeter that he you know he loves a spin um and a lot of times that ends with a turnover or a really bad shot uh so if we can get him some some shots a little bit closer to the basket uh i think we'll see that efficiency go up a lot mark mitchell 9.7 points per game on the year for duke 41.4 from three-point range but a game like clemson when the blue devils as a team only go three for 20 mark mitchell only takes one three-pointer in that game. He's 0 for 1. I mean, there are m multiple games where he's only taken one or two shots. Should he look for more shots from the outside, or how, how does Mark Mitchell become more assertive, do you think, it's for Duke to be their best? I don't – he's hitting 41%. I think it's still a low volume of them. Absolutely um, it is, yeah. So, so I don't think the remedy is to take more because I don't think that fits. I think would see that drop a lot the, with the more he took. Um I'd like to see him look, he gets to the free throw line and he makes his free throws. I want to see him being a slasher, uh, you know, hitting the offensive glass. Um, but again, like I said, it's been tough for him to, to, to cut uh, and get into those lanes, especially if he's playing the three and he, he doesn't have the handle to really beat a three, a college three off the dribble just yet. I, I'd like to see him play in that four a little bit more to maybe have that kind of advantage uh, foot speed on, on the perimeter with a four guarding him as opposed to a three. Yeah, we, we take a look at more of these numbers for Duke individually. Tyrese Proctor, a freshman for the Blue Devils, who again reclassed. He's a year earlier uh, than anticipated initially, but now having to play way more uh, in the absence of Jeremy Roach. Proctor played 37 of 40 possible minutes against Clemson this past weekend. He's averaging right at 8.3 points per game, uh, but his shooting numbers, 24% from three-point range, 34 from the floor, 88.1% from the charity stripe. What are you making of Proctor so far this season? 24, 34, 88. That's, yeah. I mean, how do you even explain that? That's like some of the craziest things I've ever heard, but um, look, Proctor had a great week, uh, was huge down the stretch in the pit game. Um, the Clemson game, he, uh, what did he score? 17 in the Clemson game. Yep. I know he took a lot of shots, but it was kind of a necessity. You know, it was really only him and flip. Um, score in there, the ball for us. Dorit kind of disappeared. Mitchell didn't do a whole lot. So somebody's got to put the ball in the basket. Um, Great first half for Tyrese Proctor. He was awesome in that first yeah, half against definitely, Clemson. Definitely. And, you know, he's he's shown that he can be – I think he is our best point guard. There's no disrespect to Jeremy. I think Jeremy's a better uh, combo guard, scoring guard, whereas Proctor looks to be a guy that can see the floor a little bit better, make some nice passes. I know he threw – a lob to Lively for a dunk in each the pit in the Clemson game. So, um, you know, we just need to we just need to get him to to make a couple of more of those shots or take a few less. Yeah, trying to find the right combination. Yeah, if you're shooting 24, percent I don't want you shooting 10 of them. <laughs> no kidding. Uh, two of nine were his final numbers from three point range against Clemson. And say be, two of those were probably late game just heaves. You know. Yeah. So, but two of seven still not. Yeah. Ryan Young, 8.3 points per game on the season. Again, we're sorting these by scoring numbers for the Blue Devils. Also, 6.8 rebounds. He's shooting 83% from the free throw line, which is great. 72% uh, from the floor for Ryan Young. Really efficient, but again, he's not individually winning basketball games. Did have that awesome 20-point game against Florida State going 7-for-7 seven seven from the floor. Uh, but uh, Ryan Young, a key piece for the Duke basketball team. He's just not going to win games for the Blue Devils by himself. Yeah, I mean, Ryan, look, he has his limitations athletically, right? Um, defensively, he's, he's not terrible, but he's not our best defensive big that we have, obviously. Sure. Um, but I will give him credit. You know, that pit game, I think he he made the play to me that, that's been the play of the season, which is when he went – got an offensive rebound as he's fallen down, saves the ball, and then still got his butt back up and got under the basket and got another offensive rebound and got fouled. That kind of heart 
and that kind of hustles the Duke basketball that I love to watch. And so I give him all the credit in the world for, for being that guy. Um, you know, just wish we could, uh, we could keep, keep him out on the floor with some of these matchups on, on defense a little bit longer. Yeah, no doubt about that. That's for sure. All right, so let's uh, – Derek Whitehead, he's at 8.1 points per game so far this season. Uh, Whitehead shooting 92% from the free throw line, which is awesome. 33.3% shooting from three-point range, 38% from the floor. Again, he just fell off a little bit, only two points against Clemson. Yeah, I mean, Derek has all the tools in the world to be a scorer. I mean, we saw it for – four years at, at uh, Mount Verb when he played in high school, um, a really great program that he, I think he started all four years for him. Um, Two-way player and can score from all three levels. He, I think he just needs to trust it and, and get in, you know, he can't be, um, he can't just be a guy out there when he's out on the court. He needs to, to bring that dog and, and come out looking for a shot. Hopefully we see that in the games to come for Derek Whitehead. All right, uh, we'll take one more break and then continue our conversation here today on Locked On Blue Devils. Locked On Blue Devils here today, proud to be brought to you by our friends over at Bet Online. It is the number one source, absolutely the number one source, for all your betting information, stats, news, and analysis. You can get all of the latest odds and trends for every professional and image league out there. We're gearing up for a big weekend of the divisional round of the NFL playoffs We'll see those teams that had a bye, the Kansas City Chiefs in the AFC, the Philadelphia Eagles in the NFC. Did that bye throw them off? Find out with all the odds at Bet Online. And if you love sports podcasts, we've got those as well. And yeah, they're going to be talking a lot about those NFL playoffs coming up this weekend. We're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting information. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet Online, where the game starts. Moving forward here on today's episode of Lockdown Blue Devils, I'm J.J. Jackson alongside my buddy Dustin Chu, who is one of the co-hosts for the Devil's Den podcast. Tell us a little bit about your podcast, Dustin, if people aren't aware of it. Yeah, uh, you can find us again on anywhere you find podcasts. Uh, the Devil's Den, we're, you know, um, two four sevens. We're with the, the Devil's Den on the message boards all the time. So, um, you know, we're just three guys that love to talk about Duke basketball to, you know, we turn blue in the face. (laughs) We will make sure to check it out. Leave them a five-star rating and review on the Apple podcast platform as well. So Dustin, let's keep moving forward. Talking about the Duke basketball team, long week off. Let's circle back. How do you think Duke can best capitalize with the extra practice time this week and everything that it's going to take to go into this game against Miami? Well, hopefully they're working on some offensive wrinkles to throw in, um, you know, Larinaga is going to come in. He's going to want to do that high ball screen that that they've always killed us with. Uh, I think this game is going to be big for Lively um, because he can really guard really anybody out there. So if, if we're switching like we were doing that second half against Pitt, that caused them so much problems. Uh, I think we might be able to, to stay in this game. One thing about Miami, their their defense is 127th or something on Ken Palm. So, um, you know, if we can just – find a way to put the ball in the basket. I, I think we have a chance. I mean, we are, uh, we do play a lot better and shoot a lot better at home. So I, I think we've got a, a fighter's chance to win this game at least. Yeah. We talk so much about the offense because it's been such a big struggle for Duke, but against a team like Miami with all those guards, you still want the defense to really be ready to rock and roll in a game like this. Again, Duke has yet to lose at home at Cameron indoor stadium. We're praying that that continues against Miami Looking at the defensive numbers for Duke, Derek Lively, the second, still leads the Duke team at 1.8 blocks per game, playing some more minutes. Now that he's getting healthy, uh, what have you made of his play over the last few weeks? Yeah, I mean, I thought he really had a great week. That pit game was probably um, the best two or three minute stretch I've seen from him. I think he he stole the ball from Burton, uh, who was trying to you know drive by him, started a break for for Proctor to get an and one and. Um, then he made that that lob catch from Proctor that he, he wasn't able to go up with, but he dumped it off to to Kyle for a dunk, and the place went crazy. So uh, then you also saw the embrace from from John. He gave him a big hug during the timeout. So you know I think he's shown that he's he's getting a little bit more comfortable. Um, he still fouls a little too much. Um, I think he fouled out of that Clemson game, um, or, or yeah, fouled out yeah. of the Clemson game. So. You know, he's not playing that many minutes, so his, his fouls per minute is pretty – as Javin Delari type <laughs> yeah. fouls per minute. 
<laughs> yeah, need that to approve for sure. Are you wanting more Jaden shoot minutes, Dustin? At this point, with as bad as we've shown our shooting to be, I, I don't think it could hurt. You know, um, I agree. And my biggest thing is going forward. If, if Jaden doesn't play anymore, then you know, next year if we look to him, he's he's going to be a sophomore, but a sophomore in name only. He'll still be a freshman on the court. He hasn't played that many minutes, so I'd like to see him get you know a couple minutes here and there in some big time games and just see what happens. Yeah, Jaden Shute's only played seven of uh, 18 total games for Duke, averaging seven minutes in those 2.4 points, but 50% from the three-point line. I think that's the shooting that Duke is looking for. And again, if it's a defensive inadequacy that's kind of kept him off the floor to this point, I don't think that matters anymore. You clearly have a need on the offensive end of the floor. Let's see if that can maybe ignite and um, spark a stretch run here for Duke. Yeah, and I'm sure there's combinations of, of- – players they can put out that kind of hide him defensively too right so um at like i said at this point you know you got to throw something at the wall and hope it sticks and, you know and the, why not you got you got a great shooter sitting over there give him a shot play miami on saturday and then another quick turnaround as duke will play big monday at virginia tech castle coliseum what are you thinking when it comes to this matchup dustin the virginia tech game yeah virginia tech Blacksburg, man. Whew. That's a uh, that's we a scary... just have horror stories on the road yeah, when it I comes to Duke basketball. We don't like I, playing on the road, man. <laughs> I, I mean, Blacksburg especially. I, I feel like the ACC one time we we literally played there every year for like six years straight. Never played them at home. Um, but you know, Virginia Tech they were my sleeper pick early in the season, and they beat Carolina in their first ACC game. But then they've lost five straight. So not real sure what's going on. I'm not taking that. For granted, even if they've lost, you know, 20 straight. All right. We haven't shown that we can beat good teams on the road yet. So um, until that happens, I'll I'll just say it's going to be a probably going to be a fight. And it's going to be a quick turnaround again for Duke to have to have play that uh, on, on Saturday and then again make the trip up to Blacksburg and play Monday night. So yep. uh, I know that you guys have great coverage there with the Devil's Den podcast. I uh, really want people to go check you guys out. And uh, Dustin, just once again, thanks for coming on the show today. I always love talking with you, JJ. That's my pal Dustin Chu from the Devil's Den Podcast. Make sure you check out what they have to offer for you. That's going to do it for our show here today. Go follow us on Twitter at LO underscore Blue Devils. I'm on Twitter at underscore JJ underscore Jackson underscore. That's going to do it for today's show. As always, go Duke. I'll talk to you tomorrow. My name is JJ Jackson. Thank you and good day.